Hey guys, welcome back to my sewing room. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how I did this dress from start to finish. If you guys haven't seen how I drafted this pattern or part one of me constructing it, I will leave it up here for you guys to go ahead and check out and then come back and watch this video. In today's video, I showed you guys how I finished doing all of the appliques, how I did the skirt, how I sewn all of this on, um, and yeah, how we finished it off and gave it a good steam. So if you guys are interested in seeing how I created this gown. Okay, so this is where we left off in our last video. We've got it mostly assembled. We've got it, um, the cups in, we've got some boning. I've also added some boning um, to the back here, which is some channels. It's not really pretty, but it'd be okay. So what we're gonna work on today is the skirt. All right, so this was take one. Like I always say, I always recut my dresses, y'all, so don't feel discouraged if you have to recut them. But this is the first attempt, and it had this big skirt on it, so I decided to just take, uh, cut the skirt off of this and use it on our current project. So I am just going to go ahead and put our dress onto the dress form, or well, the top half of our dress, onto the dress form, and then I'm going to drape our skirt that we cut off the other dress onto this one. It's just a circle skirt, y'all, nothing fancy. A circle skirt with princess seams in the front um, and the back as well. And look at our little addition to the family. We've had him for a while, but I haven't really shown him on here. So let's start our handkerchief pieces. I'm gonna start off with a rectangle and I'm just placing it to see how I would like it to go. And to be honest, I really, really, really wish that I had more tool, but shipping is crazy and I just could not get any more tool in. So the skirt was not as full as I would want, want it to have been, but it is what it is. And Captain Crazy has to make his cameo, but on to the rest of the handkerchiefing. So I have just a whole bunch of long ones and I'm kind of trying to evenly space them around the front of the dress. I'm gonna do the whole front first, just in case I run out of um, fabric. <laughs> so at least I can get some good front pictures. I've got all of the longer handkerchiefs um, draped here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some smaller squares and I'm gonna fill in the gaps. So it'll be smaller handkerchiefs here on the top. So I'm just taking smaller rectangles and I'm grabbing them at the center and that is gonna be the top of my handkerchief pieces. And I'm going to just place those in between all of the um, longer handkerchiefs. I don't know why I say I'm a lot, y'all. It really bothers me, I try not to. In an ideal world, I would have had multiple circle skirts as the base, um, ba the base overlay of tulle, and then I would put these on top of that. This is the beginnings of the handkerchief skirt. So I've got tons of, sorry, I've got tons of different size rectangles that make up each individual handkerchief, and I've got long ones, and then I've got short ones in between each. And this is what it looks like. Obviously, I'm gonna even the bottom when I'm done. And then the back is um, gathered down to the side, which helps it splay out like this. And it's gonna be the same on the other side. And then I'm gonna add a couple of the longer handkerchief panels in the back as well. But this is what the skirt's looking like. <sighs> Lots more work to be done. Okay, so I placed all of the rest of the fabric that I had left over, and now I'm just adjusting my pins so I can go ahead and baste all this down by hand. You wanna make sure you baste it by hand, number one, so you're not getting killed by all the pins in the skirt, but it just makes it so that your pieces don't move all over the place. So always practice basting, y'all. And like I said, I have some sparse areas because I did not have enough tool, but it is what it is. That's the same today, it is what it is. Now I am going to go ahead and connect the top of the dress to the skirt. I'm turning the skirt inside out and I'm going to find the center front of the skirt by matching just the princess seams there in the front. So I can find the center front. I'm sorry, y'all can hear Captain Crazy in the background. I cannot get away from you, y'all. Help me. But anyway, I found the center front of the skirt. Now I'm finding the center front of the bodice and I'm going to place the pin there too. And then I'm going to match them together and just go ahead and pin all the way around. Now my fabric that I'm using, and it is from Couture Lace, I'll leave a link below to them in the, in the description box, but this fabric is heavily beaded. So um, around where all of my seam lines are, I'm using my little thread nippers and taking off all of those beads, but don't throw them away. 
keep those beads because you never know when you're gonna need them and I did use them in the end as well. Now I'm gonna sew together my skirt and my bodice with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and I'm just sewing all the way around and I'm really sewing really slow and I'm feeling with my hands to make sure that I'm not gonna sew over any beads because I'm not trying to crack any needle. I did also wanna pop in here really quick to see if you guys would consider uh, supporting me over on my open Patreon. Having an op open Patreon it means that there won't be any extra or exclusive content on the Patreon. It will just be exclusively to support the channel and the tier is only $2. So if you guys like videos like this one, please consider supporting me over there. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the skirt sewn on. Well, I wish I had someone to help me record, but this is the bottom. It's so pretty. I think towards the, the hem where the satin is, I'm gonna add another layer of small handkerchiefs there, if I have enough. But this is what it looks like. And then I also need to add some more support in the bust because, um, I mean, it fits good, but I'm constantly have to um, pull it up and I don't have to keep doing that. So I'm gonna add a couple rows of boning and I'm gonna do that on my um, lining layer. I'm just gonna sew this on there. But this is what it looks like. This is the side. I need to add some more handkerchiefs to the side and the back. Now I am going to go ahead and cut out some extra appliques that I'm going to um, place onto the dress while watching Ant-Man. If you guys don't know, I'm a super, super nerd. I like all the Marvel movies. I like all the um, Harry Potter movies, um, Star Trek movies, Star Wars, super nerd y'all. But anyway, I'm gonna cut out all of these pieces and then I'm going to start to applique this onto the dress. Now I usually fast forward this a lot, but I wanted to go ahead and show you guys slowly for just a little bit to see, uh, for you guys to see exactly how I do this. So I have my longer piece here and I'm kind of just placing it where I want it and I'm placing a pin through. Try to pin through and not pin into your dress form because it's gonna make it a lot easier to remove the dress when you're done. And then just continue pinning around that applique. When your applique meets another um, kind of 3D part of the existing lace, you kind of want to determine, you know, um, which one will dominate over the other. So most of the times, uh, the top one will win, but sometimes you want it to look organic. So sometimes the bottom, the bottom one will overlap overlap over the top in this case the top one has one so i'm going to remove my pin that i placed and i'm going to cut off some of the 3d flowers here on uh, the bottom one so that i can lay my top applique flat now it does have tons of beading on these little uh, 3d motifs so make sure you save that beading i just saved them in one of my empty pin um containers just to keep everything safe so i have all of this beading at the end and i'm just going to go ahead and place my applique over it and place a pin there and i'm constantly like pinning and kind of stopping and looking back at my work and then going and pinning sometimes i change it up and you know what i mean and then if you have to go around corners it's okay to snip into the applique snip around some of the flowers just to make everything make sure everything is sitting right like you can see me doing that here. I'm just, that's why I use tiny scissors so I can really get in to um, those small areas. And then I'm also snipping into the bottom of these pieces here so that they can splay out nicely over the skirt. And I do have the petticoat on my dress form so that I can make sure that the shape and everything is correct since the petticoat will be worn with the dress as well. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do that all the way around the dress. Okay, so this is what we're looking like. Y'all, this is so pretty. I'm so excited. I feel like every time I finish a dress, I level up more than I, um, on skill and design and everything. So um, since we last seen each other, which is earlier today, I've added some applique pieces here on the cups. I've added some here. I've added some on the abdomen. And then I've added all of these, which I think I recorded. I've added all of those around the hemline. 
So I just cut them and they obviously need to be cut out a little bit more and fine tuned. But I've just got them pinned in place and they all need to be hand sewn down. So I'm gonna do that. This is what that looks like. And the back. I also gotta do some hand sewing here. Now I need to finish off the top. I'm gonna finish off the top here um, with the bias strip that'll be turned to the inside. And then obviously everything else will be fully lined with the, with the lining. So that's why you can still see the extra of this. Yeah, so this is what it looks like. I also am contemplating on putting detachable tool straps because I have a couple scraps. So I'm gonna put some detachable tool straps here on it and see how it looks. Just to tie the top of the skirt, the dress in with the bottom, even though the whole base is this same fabric. Yeah, but this is what it looks like. What do you guys think? And of course, I'm an idiot and I forgot to press record. So I'm just showing you here that I hemmed it and I also fully lined the dress and we are all finished. So this is our finished dress. How do you guys like it? I think it turned out really good. Um, these are just pinned in here. I like, I wanted to see what they look like and I think it looks good. It kind of ties the whole dress into the bottom. I, like I said, hand sewed all of these appliques on here, all of the additional ones like to fill in this area, all over here, all down there. I also, um, with all of the beads that fell off during the construction process, I reapplicate, rebeaded on to this neckline here. And then I gave it a really good steam and press. And this is what it looks like. I also ran out of tool from the, for the bottom, so I'm kind of keeping it like this, but I ran out of tool and I don't have time um, to wait for tool y'all know shipping is just crazy right now so i mean it is what it is but i think that overall it looks really good and i'm really proud of myself this is the back and i finished off the back here with a neat bias binding i will be doing a detailed video on just how to do that coming up soon here So tell me what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I appreciate you guys more than you know. Stay tuned for more videos like this and I'll see you in my next one.